1947, 48, I believe. Well, by that stage, I gather the, the huge amount of work he'd been doing f for wartime production had fairly much ended. It had, and then he was uh, invited by uh, Dave McGrath, who later became Sir Charles McGrath. He was the chairman, eventually the chairman of Ripco. Uh, he had a great, uh, I suppose, respect for Dave's ability and um, wanted him to come over here uh, to Melbourne. And um, that was sort of required us all up in camp and we settled in Melbourne. Yeah, now, I gather that George was then employed by Ripco? He was employed by Ripco uh, from then on and he was there for some 25 years. And uh, in that time, he was superintendent of the workshops. Then he went on to be the chief, I've forgotten the exact title, but he used to travel all over Australia, uh, you know, looking after all their outlets and uh, their machine shops. He, in that time, I believe he devised the whole exchange, Ripco, Holden, Time program. What sort of work was that? Was that for specialised holdings? No, I think it was just for the. I think it was just sort of like an average th uh, person who had a car at the holding and he wanted to yeah. update their engine, right. so they could come in. So yeah, would obviously recondition <coughs> that engine and mm. so on. Do you, when do you reckon that the <coughs> demand for that kind of specialised equipment actually started with the, shall we say, the <coughs> motoring public here? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the knowledge to make a comment there. The funny question comes because I remember that in about 1950 or thereabouts, young people who used to buy MGs would go up in stages in oh, tuning them. I was yes. wondering whether, whether that was something that other people yes. did as well. Well, I know in the 50s I, you know, I used to get carted off to the Rob Roy Hill climbs and you know, places like that. But I really wouldn't, I was too young to know. When you went to the hill climb, you were looking at cars that had, some of them, been prepared by your father. Well, the one that comes to mind is the Maybach, of course. Did it start off at Rob Roy? Um, I don't know that it's, I don't know if it started off, but I know... I the early remember, days were there. Yes, and I can remember the, you know, like a lot of motoring people, they seem to leave everything to the last minute. And, you know, <laughs> trying to get all the, you know, the boys working through the night. Yeah, Rob Roy's a bit like that. Yeah, and the women bringing in the sandwiches and the thermoses and... You know, rush, 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 just yeah. to make the deadline, to make the rest the next day. And go through the scrutiny and all that That's stuff. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, So Maybach was pretty much cutting its teeth at Rob Roy, do you um, feel? Again, I'm too young to remember. Okay. I just know that I remember the, you know, going, out there, the going out there and the Maybach yeah. was our focus. And Charlie yes. Dean, I think, was running it in those days.